What's up guys, Felipe here with another haircut video. This haircut is really cool. Uh, we're doing a traditional haircut. You know, everybody gets really, really excited about skin fades and all these modern haircuts going on. But we all forget that the traditional haircut is still in fashion. We have, I have a lot of clients that um, are not into uh, skin fade stuff. So here is a perfect example of a traditional haircut. So uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> First off, I take my JRL's Fast Fade 1000 and I'm doing a clipper over comb. What I'm doing here is simply just removing the bulk. I am not worried about blending, I'm not worried about anything being uneven or anything of that kind. That is literally just to make my life easier, easier when I go back with my number three guard. Oh, oh, oh. So here with my number three guard using my wall magic clippers, um, literally setting my first foundation or my first guideline rather. The reason why I take a number three guard is because it's short but the guard itself, the size of the guard is fairly large. So I can scoop out and not worry about cutting too much hair by accident. I'm going up on the sides about ears height and I am flicking out pretty heavily here. Uh, because we are leaving a good amount of length, we are not going up too high. So you have to be careful. Um, also, the reason why I'm doing number three is to so that I have a guideline to blend the rest of the hair from bottom up. Setting my shape up here, I like to set my shape up after I set my first initial guideline. Whether I'm doing this traditional haircut or I'm doing a low skin fade or a tape up or something like that, I like to set my shape up first just because it just aesthetically looks much cleaner from the beginning. And so I, I think it, it affects psychologically the, the client's perception of how the haircut is going. Anyways, with my Slimline Pros, I am just simply setting the shape up. Nothing crazy about that. Everybody should know how to set a shape up without any trouble. So now I am starting to set my first initial guideline to set the skin tape up on the back. So here with my blade open, um, I set my first initial guideline. Now I am setting a very, very low skin tape up on the back. So. Um, I do not want to bring that up too high. So my, my guidelines are going to be very, very close to each other at about a quarter inch to each other. So that, that way we can blend the hair at a, in a very small space. What I do here is a blade open, number one guard with blade open, then I close it, then I take a number two guard, and then I want and a half to smooth everything out. Simple and easy, but yet yeah, it's a little tricky because of the space that we have there. So once the tape up is done, now we are off to the races uh, here. From that number three guard that we set in the beginning, we're gonna use that line and we're gonna scissor over comb and blend that bottom hair to the transition hair. Now if you've never seen my videos before, I like to divide my hair cuts into three sections. The first section being the sides and back, the transition hair and the top hair. So what I do first is I like to set my foundation on the sides and back. I'll do whatever fading I need to do. From that, I'll move up to the transition hair using the bottom hair as my guideline and so on and so forth. So here with the scissor of a comb, I'm literally just blending the bottom hair that I created with the number three guard and I'm blending that up to the transition hair. Keeping the comb straight up on a 90 degree angle and wetting the hair just a little bit so it lays flat on your comb. Uh, there is really nothing tricky about scissor over comb. It's kind of hard to explain and teach this technique over video without actually being in person. What I can tell you is if you're struggling with scissor over comb, just uh, practice, you know, this is one of those things where practice makes perfect. So just keep doing it until you get the hang of it. After the scissor over comb, we are going to be doing some scissor over finger. Uh, this is where the, the transition hair completely blends into the bottom hair. 
So I like to start from the back at the occipital bone and I work from the back to one side and I work to the other side. The reason why I like to do that is because it keeps me organized. Um, I do not get lost in the haircut. One of the things that I was struggling in the beginning when I was first starting out was I would actually get lost in the haircut and I wouldn't know where I was or I forgot what guard I used at certain you know certain places and uh, yeah and the reason why we use guidelines is for that reason not to get lost all right so now the sides and back transition hair is all blended into one now we are working on the top hair so what I'm going to do is first wet the hair second I will section out the banks then I will comb the hair over to the side that he combs to or the hair naturally fall, falls towards to and I'm gonna use that transition hair as my guideline so I comb over keep my fingers at a 90 degree angle in other words I keep my fingers straight parallel to his head and I begin the blend so what I do is I work from front to back and side to side. Once you finish blending all, everything out, uh, you can't forget about the banks. So now I am going to start incorporating the banks into the rest of the hair. The reason why I leave the banks last is because I like to leave the banks a tiny bit longer than the rest of the hair. But I wasn't make sure that the client is happy with the length I always ask the clients if they're happy with the length on the sides and on the top um, in this case he wanted to take off just a little bit more off the top so as you see here I am removing about half an inch off the top of the hair so working my weight from the front over to the back and then I will cross check to make sure everything's even oh, oh. All right, so now the haircut is pretty much over with. Uh, now I take my thinning shears. All I'm doing here is literally just smoothing everything out. Thinning shears is a perfect tool to just smooth out and smudge any imperfections that the hair may have. Um, I use the thinning shears for that and also to obviously texturize the top of the hair. To be a very good barber, you need to be very well-rounded. One, you need to know how to use multiple techniques to achieve a specific look. And number two, uh, you need to know how to give your clients the, the haircut that he or she wants. Yeah, that's that. That's the haircut, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.